welcome to the Northern Counties East League podcast. I'm Richard Watts. I'm now joined by League General Manager Matt Jones. Hello everybody and welcome to the official podcast of the Northern Counties East Football League. I'm going to do something slightly different to the norm this week. I'm going to start down at the bottom end of Division 1 and we're going to start at Yorkshire Amateur. We've mentioned them in recent weeks about what a rotten run of form they've been on. They've been really struggling. People who aren't aware, they won the first league game of the season away at Louth Town. But then before Saturday, they'd gone 17 league games without a win. And in fact, in that time, they only picked up one point, losing 16 of those 17 games. That all changed on Saturday. There must have been much relief in Leeds on Saturday evening as the Amers finally picked up a win, beating Ilkley Town 1-0 with a goal from Oliver Busfield. I'd like to say well done to everybody at the club. It'll be interesting to see, can they now kick on from this and move up the league? Elsewhere in Division 1, the game I went to, Wakefield, continued their impressive run, beating Athersley Recreation 4-0. And that's six wins in a row now for Wakefield and moved into the playoff positions. Another team to watch, where's the Bridge Athletic? Had a slow start to the season. They've certainly picked up in recent weeks, now nine games without defeat, and they recorded a 4-0 win against Appleby Foddingham on Saturday. They're now just four points outside the playoff positions as well, comfortably in mid-table, but they're, they're coming up fast. The other end of the table, we've mentioned Yorkshire Amateurs, but it's now five straight defeats for Appleby Foddingham, who are second bottom, and have certainly found it tough since promotion from the Lincolnshire League last season. Game coming up this Saturday, if anybody wants to go and watch where it is, Appleby Foddingham versus Yorkshire Amateurs, the clash of the bottom two. So a real relegation six-pointer. In the Premier Division, it's now ten wins in a row for league leader Sylvan, who won one nil at Campion. Everybody that's been to Campion, they're a good side. It's not an easy place to go and pick up three points. Silsen looking impressive at the moment. Second place, Golkey United remain two points behind. They had an impressive 3-0 win at Penniston Church. Again, another side in the playoff positions and, and not an easy place to go. The top two have opened up a nice gap now between themselves and Albion Sports, who are third. And that gap's nine points, although Albion Sports do have two games in hand, so that may close, we'll see. Another team doing really well, Beverly Town. For the first time this season, they moved into the playoff positions after a 4-0 win against Thackley. And that's four straight wins and seven unbeaten for the Beavers. Over the weekend, obviously there were, there were no Championship football, Premier League football because of the international break. And we've seen some fantastic crowds with 787 at Hallam, 504 at Penniston Church, 382 at Beverley, 328 at Wakefield, and 226 at Goole, and 224 at Selby. But there's fantastic support throughout the league. We've seen a number of reports on X yesterday of how clubs across the National League system are seeing crowds drop compared to previous years. And around two-thirds of teams from step one down to step six are reporting that crowds are down. And that's the real reverse of the trends we've seen recently where crowds have been going steadily up. I've had a look at the figures specifically for the Northern Counties East League and our Premier Division crowds are down by an average of nearly 6% this season so far, while we're down 13% in Division 1. Now, we've lost some big hitters that got the crowds, the likes of North Hurley and Emily that have been promoted in recent years. But is there something else that's causing crowds to drop at other clubs as well? And for, for the fig- facts and figures, of 33 teams that we've got that were in the same league last season as they're in now, 17 are reporting an increase, but 16 are reporting a decrease. So we're roughly half and half, which is slightly better than the national trend, but it's still worrying that 16 teams are seeing crowds go down. We feel that across the league we've got better facilities than ever before at most grounds, better playing standards than ever before. We're seeing more ex-pros in the league, academy players, loan players from higher up leagues, etc. So why are clubs seeing crowds go down? I'd like to throw the the question open to people who listen to the podcast if you've got any thoughts on this. Is it too expensive? And as an example, I went to watch Sutton United play Yeovil in the National League a few weeks ago and I was stood on an open end and it was £20 to stand out in the rain. And I'm thinking that was a lot of money, but I think ours ranged from sort of £5 up to £8. Which is it still too dear for the level of football? Is it due to the cost of living crisis? Are people just cutting back generally on leisure activities and that kind of things? Or is there something else that's putting people off? Please drop us a line at the podcast and let us know if you've got any thoughts on this. Thank you, everybody. (laughs) 
Welcome to Seasons Past with Libby Edwards. In this episode, I'm looking back to the 2009-2010 season. The Premier Division contained 18 teams from the previous season plus promoted from Division 1, Scarborough Athletic, and Rainsworth, Miners Welfare. The league was won by Bridlington Town, who won 30 and drew four of their 38 games, finishing with 94 points. Their biggest win was a 8-0 win at home to Brodsworth Welfare. They also won 7-0 at Arnold Town. Rainworth Miners Welfare finished second. They won 26 and drew 5, finishing on 83 points. In third place were Armthorpe Welfare, who finished on 79 points. Brodsworth Welfare finished bottom. Second bottom was Shirebrook Town and third bottom were Nostal Miners Welfare. The newcomer to Division 1 was relegated Eccleshill United. The league was won by Tadcaster Albion. They finished on 74 points with 22 wins and 8 draws. Runners-up were Brighouse Town. They won 23 and drew 4, finishing on 73 points. In third place were Leeds Carnegie, who finished on 72 points. In the 18-team first division, Wurzbrow Bridge finished bottom. Brodsworth Welfare were on the wrong end of both highest league wins of the season. They lost 10-0 at home to Armthorpe Welfare and 13-0 at Scarborough Athletic. The League Cup was won by Dinnington Town, who beat Armthorpe Welfare 5-2 in the final at Staveley. Beaten semi-finalists were Pickering Town and Grimsby Borough. The President's Cup was won by Winter Tun Rangers, who defeated Arnold Town 3-1 at Staveley. In the FA Vars Pickering Town and Armthorpe Welfare made it to the fourth round. Pickering beat Horden, North Shields, Winsford and Dunkirk before losing to Mask. Armthorpe Welfare beat Sunderland RCA, Ashington, Liversidge, Daisy Hill and Bridlington Town before losing to Wroxham. In the FA Cup, Rainworth Miners Welfare made it to the second qualifying round where they were beaten by Bedith United. To get there they had beaten Ratford, Heather St. John's and Holbrook Miners Welfare. Next up in CEL Talk, I'll hand straight over to host Aaron Walton. So, hello everybody. We've got uh, Bob and Sai and myself, Aaron, tonight. We're missing Adam, however, because he's got a better gig. He's at the Football Contents Award, nominated for content on non-league. And I think you guys will agree with me that he really does do a good job promoting the game at our level, doesn't he? Yeah, he Absolutely. certainly does. Yeah. And I think the awards are at um, Tottenham Hotspur's ground, so that'd be a, a good yeah, evening. They certainly are. He's already put some photographs up. It looks like he's having a good time. <laughs> oh, is it? Right. Yeah, so like... I, hope, I, hope, I hope he wins. Um, yeah. uh, it was at uh, it was at Barton on uh, Tuesday night, but unfortunately I was at work again, so I didn't get a chance to see him. So he, he did a little thing on Barton Town, which was quite good. Uh, but... Uh, Enough of that. Let's get on to the games played in the NCL over the week. Mm. And of course, it all started last Friday because Friday night's NCL night, isn't it, Bob? <laughs> it certainly is. It certainly yes. is. <laughs> and uh, myself and Richard, we had a trip over to uh, Bradford uh, to the Horsefall Community Stadium. Albion Sports versus Barton Town. Well, Albion beat Barton 3 1. Uh, but it wasn't a, one of those games where you think it was 3-1, really. You know, it wasn't a slacking or anything like that. It was a really good game between two good teams. Uh, Barton up the scoring up after hitting the post uh, with a Will Ward B looping shot. Really nice goal. Unfortunately, that spurred Albion on and um, Fernando Moak scored after 32 minutes. Albion then had a penalty saved. Uh, but Albion were getting stronger. And then the second half, they really were strong. They really did turn it on Albion Sport. Uh, Nathan Cartman latched on to a nice pass and neatly took it away. I think from where we were, they looked shades of offside there when he got the ball. But uh, 
it still was a good finish and it still needed a lot doing to it. But Nathan Cartman's second goal, absolutely brilliant. It was worth the entry fee alone just to say what a great turn in the box and slotted it in the bottom corner to make it 3-1. Barton didn't give up. They kept going. They kept plugging away. They hit the bar and Jordan Porter pulling off a good save. So it was a long old journey back, I must admit, because as the usual, the M62 was closed somewhere along the line and the A63 is always closed. So... But for me, guys, Albion look really good. The, the, you've got the midfielder, Luke Sherry, Emerson Cox, Aaron Bassey, Dom Staunton, all playing really good. They've got Fernando Moat, Cartman, Sudards and Cissé up front. And also Tom Ponta played really well. And I'm going to give a special mention to the little man, Leon Henry. Still going strong. He must be 38 now, Leon. And he's still got an engine as big as a Harley Davidson. So it was a really good game, to be fair. Anyway, enough about the town. Let's get on to other teams. Uh, in Division 1, though, uh, on Friday night, Shelley lost out, didn't they, to a team in form, Dernan District, cementing the place in second. I think they won 3-1 as well. So that was your Friday night football. I'll tell you what, we'll start in Division 1 for uh, for the Saturday football. So Maltby beat the Real... Uh, Maltby and the Harrogate Railway drew 0-0. Nostel, again, picked up points with a solid 2-0... Uh, victory over Glass Outen, which was I thought was a good win. Good win, didn't you? Happened. Yeah, didn't you? I thought it was a good win for uh, Nostel. Selby beat Dromfield 2 1. And we're going to talk about crowds later on, but that was a good crowd of 224 there, wasn't it? Um, and it was a last, it was a last minute goal for Selby. Yes, it was, yeah, yeah. We're back to the last minute club, aren't we? Uh, <laughs> South Leeds bounced back after a poor showing at Brig. They beat a good club, uh, a good club on two 0 So that was good from uh, South Leeds. Uh, and on to you, Si, with Wakefield against Athersley. Um, three hundred and twenty-eight there, good crowd. And again, yeah, well, it's, you, it's you, picked, picked up a bit, a bit now. But I think the international break helped. Yeah, um, yeah, because it helps put a few bums on seats, doesn't it? That, but yeah, we're starting to get some form back now. Yeah. Um, as I'm sure we'll come to in positions later, I won't uh, burst your bubble on that one. But we have moved upwards. You um, certainly I'll say are, that yeah. much. Yeah. I'll say that much. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, a d- difficult team to break down, Athersley. Um, I think I think we've seen a different Athersley this season when we've been looking at the tables and the results than what we've seen for the previous two, and that really showed itself in the game. Um, although it was a four 0 win, particularly in the first half, they were really difficult to break down. They didn't offer a lot going forward. Um, I don't think we were troubled too much at the back, um, but yeah, they were they were well organised at the back, and it took us a little bit into the second half before we really started to um, stretch our legs a little. Four different scorers again, I say. You you certainly are a collective there, aren't you? At Wakey, we do tend to do that rather than one focal point. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know there was a previous week where uh, Akil Francis, who scored again here, got a hat trick, but most of the time. The goals are spread around the team. Callum Brooks there has got three and five now since joining. Um, yeah. Mogashi as well, getting his first goal for us with a beautiful curled shot from outside the area. Um, in fact, Keenan uh, Kenzie's goal um, for the third one was a rifled shot from outside the box as well. So, yeah, it was it was, it was a good game, a nice entertaining match and um, propelling us forwards in our plight. Definitely looking a lot better than it was a few a, a month ago, wasn't it? Well, I'm, I'm, I, I can I can even see I'm smiling a bit more now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit happier now. Good, good. So we go on to the Wombwell. Surprised he lost out to Armthorpe one nil. So that was a good win for Armthorpe, wasn't it? Um, who else have we got? Wasbra. Oh, their excellent form continues with a solid four uh, nil victory against Apfrod, who really are struggling, aren't they? So, yeah, really not looking too good for App Fraud unless they can change their fortunes. And yes, oh yes, Yorkshire amateurs have got a win. Yeah. And look Result- who they beat, they beat Ilkley, yeah. who have been That's playing yeah. really well. Well, Ilkley, Ilkley have, like I keep saying, they've been so inconsistent, though. Mm. Ilkley have been good, but they've also been pretty poor at times. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They've, yeah. they've been good when they've played some of the some of the teams higher up. Mm. Um. But when you look, it was Dronfield that beat them before. Yeah. So, but we're not taking anything away from the amateurs because they've won uh, 1 0. So, well done. You've got to be able to play it uh, no matter what level you're at. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, 
definitely. You've got to beat the teams at the top and the teams at the bottom, haven't you? You certainly have. You certainly have. But well done to Yorkshire Amateurs for, for getting three points. And this Saturday is mm-hmm. going to be a massive six-pointer for Yorkshire Amateurs because they're playing Appleby Frodingham, if I'm not mistaken. So that'll be a really good game. So that's the uh, Division 1 covered. Let's go into the Prem. So we start with Beverly. They're on such a roll, aren't they? Another great win at the Norwood against a team up there. Thackley 4-0. 382 good souls at the Norwood. So well done to uh, all the guys coming out there and ladies. Uh, Botsford getting a very much needed win against Tadcaster 5-3. Well, you got your money's worth there with eight goals, didn't you? So that was a good game. Uh, a good win for Tabletop of Silsden. Away at Campion with a Casey Stewart solitary goal, sealing it 1 0. Uh, Bob, I'm good, I'm good to you now, mate. I had you down for a win. What I know you, you predicted last week a win, you know, but it's the same old story. I'm, oh, I'm you sorry. played well in the first half and you went to pieces in the second. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm sounding like a broken record. You certainly are, mate. Um, I mean, it was nil nil. I mean, we, we Google competed and played as well, just as well as Parkgate in the first half. Nil nil at half time. The second half, um, five minutes into the second half, a, w- a ball comes in from the right, bounces in our area, goes right to the far post, and Liam Liam Thompson he headed it in. Nobody nobody cleared it. That was five minutes straight after the second half, um, and then Thompson again with a header from, from across from the right in after sixty two minutes, and it was two 0 and we were chasing the game. Mm. The trouble at Goole is our last four games would be nil nil at half time, nil nil at half time, in and then the fourth to the last, Hansworth they went in front and Mark West equalised for it. No, not Mark West. It was um, it was uh, Shea 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 Mule had drew. Got the equaliser. Yeah. But then, but then in the last three games, so last four games, nil nil half took to half time. Then we have this, we come out in the second half and we seem to concede early. And so it's it's gotten to the players' heads, I think. Yeah. So, we, um, but it's not it, confidence, you know, when it's like this must be low. But performance wise, we played well. I, I thought, we mean, we, we often puffed as we usually do, but we didn't. We never threatened in the second half mm-hmm. that we were going to score. Um, so we've got 18, 18 games to re- remain now, and um, it's lo- it's not looking good for us at the moment. We need we need some wins and and quickly. Yeah, yeah, they'll come. I think good crowd again, Bob. Two two four. It's not bad, yeah. is it? I mean, you know, it, it was two two six actually. Two, we two, had two, two letters, six. I've taken two, two off. off. I've I've taken two off because they went off at half time. <laughs> yeah. there, were two, there were two late runners coming at 20 past three. Oh, well, that's who I didn't count then. So, yeah, well done yeah. to the 2 2 6. So, yeah, uh, so. well, we just have to. But Parkgate were well supported. They brought quite a few from Parkgate as well. Yeah, so. yeah, well, that's good. Well done, Parkgate, for bringing a few. Um, we go on to Hallam 2, Naresborough 2. 787 at Sandy Gate. It's, it's phenomenal, isn't it? Good result um, for that. Good result for now because they was yeah. they was they was two nil at one time. There was, um, wasn't there? Yeah. Then so, so well, lucky. Luckily for you, Bob, Winterton lost again, didn't they? So and was one nil, three one. Yeah. And there was one nil up at half time. Yeah, so, Reece, yeah. Reece Moody scoring. Yeah, Scott Ruthven with a couple and Joe Parking for Answorth and uh, Reece Moody doing what Reece Moody does score. Score goals and is it uh, Winterton now? So three one to Handsworth beating Winterton. And our our game of the day, what we both, what we all said last week, Peniston Church versus Golker, five hundred and four turning out to see uh, a three nil win for Golker. So Peniston have uh, come a little bit unstuck, haven't they? They they have, haven't they? Yeah, they, were, they started mm. they started off well at the beginning of the season. Yeah, um, but the last seven or eight, six or seven weeks they've. Um, They've been up and down quite a lot, haven't they? Yeah, they have. They have, but uh, they're still up there, so it's all not lost for Penis. It's not doom oh, on no, God. No. No, no. And and they're still getting the fans in, so they're a well supported team. Uh, they're, 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 I think they'll finish in the playoffs. Oh you know? yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely think they will. Pickering Town. Well, I've been talking about Pickering Town playing some good football and not winning. 
Same with Frickley, playing some good football and not winning. But Pickering came out 3-1 against Pickering. So the Pikes are back to winning ways. Well done, Pickering, because you do play some lovely football. Uh, and lastly, Rossington, beating Eccles Hill in a tight game, 1-0. So that concludes the Saturday games. Now, if we go on to the midweek games, gentlemen, uh, they were all cancelled due to the weather. What apart, was from, it? Yeah. <laughs> apart from one, and I need a drum roll. Barton Town. Yeah. No, Barton correct Town, you. it was, it was I, on. I, I'm going to correct you. There was two played last week. Oh, go on then, Bob. You still be thunder. <laughs> I know there was. I know there was. But I just... Oh, go on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. The Amphot the Amphot played uh, Monday night, didn't they? They did. Yeah. Yeah. That's they before all the bad too. weather, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Uh, what was the score at Amphot, Bob? It was. It was. It actually was at Route One Rovers and yeah. Route One Rovers. If that's not easy to say. One six three. So plenty of goals. Oh yes. Yeah. I think Route One Rovers were one of the teams that. Um, I don't know if it's gospel, but I think they did, or they were looking to come up into um, the NCL Division One last season. But I'm not. I'm not sure. Well, obviously didn't. So they might mm. be looking to come up again. So that was good. But uh, well done to Route One Rovers. Hard look at um, Armthorpe. But uh, Barton Town's game, when the bad weather was on on Tuesday, when it snowed, Barton's was on. Mm. Now, it's not It's not often we can say that. And we do get a lot of ribble remarks and flack about Barton Town games being called off. So I <laughs> want to say to the naysayers, put that in your pipe and smoke it. Our game was on. But the worst yeah. thing was we lost. <laughs> yeah. I bet it was very cold. Apparently but, so. I didn't go. I was at work. But uh, it was very, very cold. I know Adam went and he said it was the coldest he's ever been at a football match. So, oh, yeah. Unluckily, Barton lost. It was Lincoln's senior cup. Barton lost 2-1 to Lincoln United. It was quite a tight game. But uh, that's two on the bounce. Barton have lost. But uh, I'm not too worried about the cup games. So let's have a preview then, gentlemen, of... Uh, no, I'm not going to have a preview. I'm going to have a look at the league table. How dare I go on to? Let's have a look at the league table. Sorry, Bob. That's <laughs> all right. So, if we look at uh, the Prem, Stilton is still at the top on uh, 45 points. With Golka two points behind on 43. Both played 19 games. Albion, well, they're a good few points behind. They're on 34, but they've got two games in hand, haven't they? And they look very good for the money on uh, Friday night. Uh, Penistone, as we've said, uh, they're still on 34, but they've played 21 games, so they've played a few, uh, definitely a few more games than anybody else. And Beverly, 19 games, 33 points. So, again, Beverly are looking uh, looking good for the playoffs, aren't they? Yeah, we are. Uh, really good. What I'd say um, there as well, Al Albion have only played six at home and 11 away. So, yeah. although not only have they got games to catch up, they've also got plenty of home games compared to the others before the end of the season, and that could be telling as well. It, it could be, and they're very used to the pitch to play on. It's a 4G pitch. Now, people say, <clears throat> and fans will say, well, everybody trains on 4G. The difference between training and playing matches, a big difference. So, I think, it, I think teams do have a little bit of an advantage, but that's maybe just me. I don't know, but it it does it does fare well for a good game. I must admit because it was a really cracking game on Friday night on the four G. So if we look at the bottom, we've got unfortunately we've got a goal on uh, twenty games, nine points. Is that correct, Bob? That is unfortunately it is. Yeah, yeah. And then we've got Winter and Rangers eighteen games, fifteen points. Uh, Nairsborough sixteen points, eighteen games, and Tadcaster. 19 games, 19 points. So, I see t yeah. I see Tadcaster today have re-signed Ollie Norman. They are, yeah. Yeah, back from Bradford. That, that's a good signing for them, isn't it? It is a good signing for them. So, they, they're hoping to pull away Tadcaster. We don't know. But it's certainly looking um, it's looking tight there and goal definitely in the wind, don't they? We, we, need, we, we certainly do. So, yeah. Sooner than later. Sooner, sooner than later. Than, yeah, definitely. So, it's uh, it's looking uh, it's looking uh, dangerous down at the bottom, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So if we go on to uh, Division One, so Harbury still at the top, uh, twenty games, fifty points. 
That's, that's, that's they have amassed some points there. Uh, Denham District have played twenty two games, forty five points. Woonwell. Uh, 18 games, 39 points. South Leeds, 21 games, 36 points. And Wakefield have finally got in there. 18 games, 34 points. So so you've got a couple, few games in hand over a couple of, well, three teams there, haven't you, uh, Si? So yeah. It's games in hand, but as we always say, you've got to you've got to you've got to pick up the points still. Um yeah. but oh, yeah, yeah, it does it does make for healthy reading at least. But as you look below that, um even within two points, there's another five teams. So yeah. it is really close for those sort of at the moment looking at the, like the you know the final two yeah. playoff spots. It's going to be tight, isn't it? Because teams are going to take points off each other, aren't they? They've got Absolutely. to. So they've got to. So that's looking good. Uh, if we look down at the bottom, Yorkshire Amateurs uh, play, uh, played 19 and got seven points. Apple be fronting them exactly the same. So that's like we said, that's a massive game for those two teams. Uh Swallowness, they're sort of twenty games and nineteen points, and Nostel nineteen and nineteen. So played nineteen, got nineteen points. So can Yorkshire Amateurs and Apple be fronting them escape? That's what I'm asking myself. It's gonna be hard work, isn't it? But I can't see it myself. It's, like, oh, it's a big ask, isn't that? But you never know. Strange those things have happened. It's a massive ask, isn't it? It's a massive ask. But like you say, strange things have happened. So let's have a look at uh, our games over the uh, weekend then, what we've got to come. So is there any Friday night games before I get chastised? Well, no. Not this week. No, not this week. You're safe. You're safe. So Friday night is certainly not NCEL night. Right, so yeah. we've got we've got in the Prem, we've got Barton Town versus Thackley. Pretty even game that that could go either way, I think. We've got Beverly Town versus Tagcaster. What do you reckon to that one? Do you think home win for that one? Yeah, yeah it could be, but now they've got Ollie Norman back for Teddy, might that might lift them. It so. might, yeah, yeah. Ollie Norman Asterick, maybe. We never know. Never know. No. So, uh Bottersford play Campion. Well, Campion have lost a few, haven't they? And Bottersford won. On Saturday, so their tails will be up. So that could be uh, that could be a good game. I think. I think Campion might just have a little bit too much for Bottesford. What do I you fancy a, I fancy a draw for that one. You fancy score a draw? draw. You? Yeah, score draw. Eccles Hill and Pickering. Ooh, that's a good game. Two good footballing teams there. That'll be a good game. What do you mm. reckon there, Bob? Uh, I fancy another draw there. Another, another draw. draw. Right, Golker and Parkgate. Got to yeah, be Golker. Oh, God, Golker, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Parkgate Park get will test them. They'll they will. Them. Oh, they definitely will. Uh, oh, Goal and Hallam. I am not going to say anything, Bob. No. I'll well, tell we, you we, off air. I'll tell you off air. But what, we, what, what, we desperately, desperately need a win. Um, so we, we need to we need to put our shooting boots on. To me, yeah. I, I think the players have got the shoot on sight. Uh, test oh, the keeper. Well. Work the keeper. That's that, mm. that's what I would be saying to them. But um, it's easy yeah. for me w- watching. Um, but they, they've and got to go up the, the bus for the first five minutes of the second half as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's what because that's when you're conceding every time. I, I, don't, I looked at what you said. Three out of your last four games conceding a goal within five minutes of the restart. Yeah. We seem we, we seem to. I don't know if it's, if it's a psychological block or what. Um, but we do, and the supporters, you know, the supporters know that. Uh, yeah. There's been some, been something on our fans forum this week. People saying don't concede in the first five minutes and second half, nah, you know. So yeah. we'll see. But what the what the thing is, just saying on Gould's match, I think with the ground developments, this will be the last match where we use the main stand because after Saturday's game, we aren't at home till three weeks. So right. I'd imagine by, by in three weeks' time, we will be in our temporary facilities. Um, yeah. By then. And they're probably starting to work, not standing down then. But we'll see. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's let's hope the, the work gets done quick. So, uh, Hansworth and Albion, they've got, they get battling out. So, the battle of the 4G teams. Uh, mm. Nares, Naresborough play Winton. Now, that is a massive six-pointer. Yes, massive. it is. Yes, it is. I, I'm, to be honest, from our point of view, um, I, want I'm hoping, I want to draw exactly right. I was just going to say that. We don't want we don't either side. See, because if Nairsborough win, they're they're pulling away from from us and Winderton. Then there's, there's, yeah. there's definitely a gap. Um, 
So yeah, we need, we need hopefully be a, a one-one draw. I'd settle right. for that. I reckon Nairs will win with a penalty. I've I've seen it so many times before. Anyway, Um, Stillsden, they've got a really good tie against Rossington. So, I I mean, on paper, Stillsden you'd think would win, but Rossington, they're nobody's mugs, are they? Rossington? No, be a good game that. Be a good game, but I think I think Stillsden will squeeze it. I think I'll get for you because we're at home. Just just squeeze that. So, if we go into the uh, first division. And another big, big game of the day for me is Appleby Fodingham versus Yorkshire Amateurs. Now, Yorkshire yeah. Amateurs have got the tails up, they've got the win. Appleby Fodingham are really struggling. So, mm-hmm. could Yorkshire Amateurs have two wins on the bounce? Who knows? Yeah, I reckon. Yeah, you I'm, reckon. I'm backing that. Um, having played both recently, I think Yorkshire Amateur offered more. All right, um, OK. So we're I, looking I, for... I, th- I think Yorkshire Amateur can do that. So, we're going looking for Yorkshire Amateurs as a... As a win there. So, I'm thought play was, bro. What do you reckon to that one then, Si? I think you're look, looking at the recent results. Depends on what Armthorpe turns up, doesn't it? Because yeah. they haven't done too bad lately. But Wisborough, I think you've pointed out, they're in good form lately. So, um, they're doing ever so well. I'll probably edge it for the away side on that one. Oh, Wasborough, Wasborough and away win. Athersley Rec against Wombwell. Ooh, that's a good game. I think we'll all bounce back with that one, though. I think that, yeah. that, that defeat last week will have stung them a little bit. So, yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll bounce yeah. back there, I think. And then, oh, you've got a trip to the Hawthorne. Brig versus yeah. Wakefield. Tough match, tough place to go. Um, we've not got the greatest records there. No, um, well, you know, played them a couple of times before. And, um, yeah, it could be a tough one, that. Be a good test. Pitch, um, I don't pitch, think I'm going to make that one. Are you not going to make that one? The pitch isn't the sure. best. In the best nick at the moment at Brig, it's a bit pat patchy. Uh, but we'll just we'll just see. It'll be it'll be a good test. I'm going to go for a, a score draw. Mm. I'll still back us back us to win, obviously. But I yeah, think oh, it'll be yeah, a tight one. Yeah, be a tight one. Yeah, definitely a tight one. Durning District versus South Leeds. That'll be a good game. Uh, Dromfield and Shelley, another good one. Glass Outen versus Selby. What do you reckon for that one, Selby? Or oh, glass out. Yeah, I'm going to go draw. <laughs> it's, it's it's Christian Fox's old club, isn't it, Selby? Um, yeah, he's at glass out now, so he'll, he'll be wanting to win, won't be? Oh, definitely, yeah. So he'll be. And then we've got Arrogate Rail and Nostel. Well, Nostel have got a good bit of form now, haven't they? They've had a, a couple a of couple, haven't they? Yeah. yeah, picked up. So anything could happen. I know the Rail have got a very young team, so. And uh, another good game, Horbury versus Maltby. I don't think Horbury played at the weekend, did they? No, no they didn't. No. They didn't. They didn't. Having a rest, so they'll have been training. So, so they'll that'll be, be fully cool. fit, but um, yeah, yeah. So we, we need we need Maltby to do us a favour in that one. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and Ilkley versus Louth. Uh, you just never know with Ilkley, do you? Which Ilkley turns up, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Although Louth are struggling as well, though, so I think I think yeah. that's the ultimate that's going to pick up a win with that one. Yeah, so it's, it's a long journey for Louth as well, isn't it? That's going to be one of the longest of the season, I think. It's got to be, hasn't it? Yeah, got to be. And then Swallownest versus Club Thorn. So, well, Club Thorn lost, didn't they? So uh, Swallownest might uh, fancy the chances. I don't know, but. Uh, there's a few midweek games as well, isn't there? But uh, they're all sort of cup games, isn't they? Have you have you picked any out, Bob? Midweek? Yeah, yeah. I'll just say this: but for all these Saturday games to go ahead, we've got to watch out for Bert, haven't we? Bert. <laughs> he's got, he's got I'll, I'll, I'll bite. Who's Bert? Yeah, yeah. It's Storm Bert. There's a storm oh. coming, and it's called Bert. Oh. And it's, and it's going to come Saturday afternoon. They were saying on forecast tonight. So, uh, so we'll have to see, won't we? So Saturday morning, how... Saturday afternoon. Yeah, so I'll see what, how many games Bert puts it puts into. You know what it's going to start, though? Your Storm Bert will start at about one o'clock Saturday yeah. afternoon. It'll be a yeah. gorgeous morning, absolutely yeah. gorgeous morning, and then you'll get down to the grounds. All the volunteers will get down to the grounds, do all the prep, and then it, yeah. I won't say it'll chuck it down with rain or snow. Because <laughs> yeah. when you're at home, you don't want any games off because you... you... Our programs are printed. We've gone 
printed. And we've got the fold sorted. And and then when you, if it's took it down with rain, you're trying to sell probes and raffle tickets. It's yeah. not good for the wrong series, you know. It isn't. It so, isn't at all. So, so. I thought we got the forecast wrong. Yeah, well, they never do nowadays, do they? It's spot on usually. If the forecast mm. says it's going to rain at one o'clock, it generally does rain at one o'clock, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, so I hope, I hope Bert doesn't make an appearance. Aye, Bert, Bert can go Bert off, can't he? So, <laughs> so, so have we got any good games to look at midweek? I know Barton was supposed to be playing Hallam in the Cup, but I see because their game was postponed, they're playing the Hallam, is it Hallam Senior Trophy? Oh, not Hallam, is it? Is it, I can't remember what is it, Hallamshire yeah, Trophy? There's some, yeah, there's some being reorganised. There's, there's a game in the Prem on, on the Tuesday, Thackley at home to Albion. Yes. Um, so that's a, a bit of a Bradford derby, isn't it, really? Yeah, it is. And um, I Swallen think... Brig as well. Swollen S and Brig. I know I might be going and going to the Norwood and watching Beverly. I think there is any in the Cup. Yeah, because they're obviously Pickering. Yeah, Pickering. And of course, it's the rescheduled Harbury versus Silsden, so the top of both divisions, because that was going to be played last Tuesday, um, but was frozen off, yeah. snowed off, whatever it was. Um, so that's scheduled for next Tuesday now as well. Well, that might be good. It might be Bert is off this time. First. Yeah, so, <laughs> so there's definitely some good games. So, in, I think. In the, in the West, sorry, in the West Riding Cup, that's got Gold Cap versus Selby. That'll be a, a test for Selby, won't it? It will be, yeah, it will be. They've been doing well in the Cup so far. I saw them against Winterton in the League Cup and they, they beat Winterton. So um, let's have a look. Are we going to pick our... Because we're going to have a look at league attendances, but let's have a look and choose our team of the week. So we'll, uh, uh, we'll start with you, Bob, because I know you always pick one. Yeah, well, for me, the team of the week has got to me. It's got to be Yorkshire Amateurs beating Oakley. When... When you're beating, when you've only won one game and drawn one all season, and then you beat someone like Ilkley, even though it's one nil at home, because Ilkley are well up, that must be a confidence booster for the team and the club. So that would be my team of the week. So you've gone for Yorkshire Amateurs, Bob. Good choice. Uh, si, who have you gone um, for? Bob's the week for me. Armthorpe winning away at Wombwell, who have been solid so far. I think it's a good win for Armthorpe. Is that especially after? We beat them the week before. Definitely. Good choice, that. Um, so, my choice. Well, Bob's, as usual, picks my choice. <laughs> and I was going to pick Yorkshire Amateurs. So, I'm going to go. I'm going to go for Pickering. 3-1 against Frickley. They've been playing some good football just lately, but being unlucky. Uh, with uh, We're not picking any points up, but they've got a nice win there at home at Pickering. So, I'm going to go for Pickering. Well done, Pickering. So, I was going to go for Yorkshire Amateurs, but I don't want to copy you, Bob, so I'm going to go for Pickering. Well done, the Pikes. Yeah. Well, I'll, just, I'll just say this. I just thought one week, one week, we can pick the team of the week, being goo. Yes, I, I know. To, we've got to win first, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, 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 you will, you will. So I've got but, one piece of information for you as well, yes, being, the, being, no. being, being the geeky stato type person. I did a quick look for you. The uh, Louth versus Ilkley is the longest trip in either of the divisions. It's 117 miles between the clubs. Wow. It's the longest of any of any teams in the division, that either, is a, either that, the first or the prem. That's an so I'll just check that. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't want to be playing. You wouldn't want to be playing that on an evening, then, would you? No, <laughs> no, but I bet they would. <laughs> I bet they were rescheduled for it, but never mind. You got to fit him in somewhere, right? Finally, I just want to finish on this. Gents, just to get your feedback on this and what you think. I mean, there is talk, and I know Matt Jones and the NCEL talked about the decline this season of attendances in the NCEL. So we've had a look at the stats, and I know he's looked at the stats from Premier Sam, but I get i I've got the stats for the Prem, and the nine clubs are down on their attendances so far this season, but nine clubs are doing better than they were last season. And overall, they're about 5.5% down on last season. So I'm not too sure about Division 1, but I've got... 8, eight, eight down and 7 up. So 8 down and similar. 7 up. Yeah, quite similar. I know you get the likes of Wakefield, Selby and Brig. They're all, they're all well... You always get over 200 uh, more, than, more than not, don't you? So they're all reasonably well supported. But I'm throwing this open to you guys. So 
Why do you think attendances are down? Well, I, I think this season, the football, there's more football on a Saturday morning at half 12. I mean, I looked before start up tonight. There's three games on Saturday morning, either on Sky or TNT, and then there's one in the evening, half past five. So that, mm. Does that stop people travelling to matches? They you know, have more football teams watching it, and so it's saving if it's a cold day, they don't want to get a, you know, turn out. You just that could be one of the reasons. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you think, Sai? I know, I know. Obviously, the the, the big one for us because we've got a big chunk of a, of a drop was moving from Wakefield to Featherston because we're we're further out, so that so the crowds are going to have dropped for us. So so we've dropped quite a percentage. Mm. Um, but looking at some of the other teams, they're only down by about sort of ten fifteen percent. The ones that are down. Yeah. Um, and I'm just wondering if it could be just a time of the year thing. Do you know what I mean? I don't. Know, I don't know if those figures are compared to the average of the whole of last season, or if it's comparative to this point of last season. Because mm. once you get through the new year, the crowds are going to come back up again. Once you start getting into the fairer weather, yeah, um, yeah. it could be just. It might just be the drop off. Yeah, at, at Google, I, the, I, I, the weather. I looked, yeah, I looked at these figures for Google. Last year we was averaging two hundred and seventy seven. This year, in the seven home games where we could have an attendance, it's 197. So that's a 29% drop on us. Oh, right. Yeah. A big drop. But when, when you're both in the league, you can expect that because will people come, want to come watch a team that's not not, not scoring or winning? Um, the fair is, I, I call the fair weather supporter. If it's if the weather's a bit dicey, they think, oh, well, I'm not probably going watching goal today if they're not playing well, you know. But if you're mm. playing well, you've got a good product. And you're playing attractive football, people come and watch you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I mean, I'm a great advocate for this level of football. I mean, it's a decent price. The, food, the food's pretty good and well priced. The product mm. on the pitch is overall generally good. I mean, you're never going to get every game is going to be a belter, but it's it's honest. The guys are working hard on the pitch, aren't they? So it's proper football. It's proper, it's football, proper yeah. football. Yeah, yeah. I mean, facilities are getting better, aren't they? I mean. When we started watching Bob, I mean, the facilities were really poor, weren't they? But they're a lot better yeah. now. I mean, yeah. I would say most clubs have got a really good clubhouse. They've got uh, the, the most clubs offer hot food. Well, I think all clubs offer hot food. And generally, at most grounds, you can get shelter, can't you? You can yeah. get some yeah. kind of shelter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, so, uh, many, many years ago, you could go to the way ground or even our home ground, you didn't have a clubhouse, you know. Mm, um, mm. You couldn't go for that. Now, you go to most grounds and they've all got clubhouses, haven't they, which is, which yeah. is a, a good thing. They've all got clubhouses. You can all, you, everywhere you can, but I mean, if you like, you... Yeah, yeah, food. yeah you, can, you, can, you can do that one time, you know. Uh, I mean, everybody like, I mean, a lot of football, a lot of supporters like the rail, don't they? So, you can get a drink there and it's, it's all pretty, pretty good. I'm not a drinker myself, so... Because uh, I just generally find I need to be going to the toilet hundreds of times. So, but <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I think case, I could... us men yeah. of a certain age, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as a, I always look at myself as being really young till the youngsters say, "Oh God, look at you, you old fart!" And you think, "Oh, they're look, they talking to me." <laughs> so there's many a good tune playing on an old fiddle, eh? So, but um, yeah. I, I, it could be a combination of things, and like like you say, Si, I mean, what what are these statistics based on? I mean, I think the golden thing for clubs is if we can get over two hundred. That's yeah. that's your sort of that's your point. If you can get over two hundred, you're doing well. I know at Barton we started to get some really good crowds. You're getting three hundred and fifty, four hundred sometimes, and then it dropped off last season because we weren't particularly playing well and. Players were in and out, and so on and so forth. And the football wasn't particularly good. But this season, we just started to pick up a bit. Uh, the football is superb, really good football. You know, they're passing it about a bit, and we're starting to get a few fans back. But I do think people are possibly got other things to do as well. There's a lot more choice in there in life now than there used mm. to be as well. You know, there's so many things you can do on a Saturday or in midweek. I know our crowd was down on there. Uh, Tuesday, but it was so cold. You didn't want to go. If you've been at work all day, and you you don't want to be going back out into the cold, do you? So, 
No. I think we've seen a general upturn from from fans that are put off by the the cost of corporate football. I mean, you know, at, at league level and what have you, it's, it's the, the prices by comparison are astronomic, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? You can yeah. you can get a season ticket to go to a, to an NCL club for what it costs you for one ticket, a Premier League club, you know, for one game. Uh, yeah. Uh, That's it for this edition. If you've got any news for the podcast or you'd like to appear on the podcast, please email ncelpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.